I'm Ron Patterson with Utah State University Extension in Carbon County. In this segment, we're going to cover putting together from the hip purlin down, putting on the wiggle wire track and having this connected to each of our ribs here, and then the, uh, the uh, sidewall curtain support here to keep things from flowing around, and then also how we fasten up. So I'll show how I put all this sidewall together. It helps a lot with the ventilation, and it makes it very functional. For the hip purlin, I like to use plumber strap to hold the, the T-post to the hip purlin. I also have the screw right here that uh, holds that up into place. That way after I get the plastic on I can release that screw and kind of pull down and, and keep a little bit more tension on the plastic. It doesn't flap quite as much. You can see here they use these nail plates to hold the ends of the boards together. So when you're doing the hip purlin it's a lot easier if you have a second person to help you hold that board up while you put in your plumber strap and, and the nail plates. You want to gap your, your joints between your, your hip purlins in between the ribs, makes it easier. Now I've shown how you can use the nail plates along here. You can also use a 1x4 if you have it long enough and it fits in between there. 1x4 will work pretty good. I have some, ran out of nail plates, I bought all of them out of the hardware store and uh, I have some 1x4, so I cut some 1x4 sections to splice those together. The end T post, I'll uh, fasten in this manner, goes around to the end of your hip purlin, around your T post, so that I've got it fastened up pretty good there, uh, keep it in place. So each one of these ribs is attached to the hip purlin here. I like to use plumber strap. You can use a pipe clamp if you want. The reason I use plumber strap is because I would like I like to be able to have it just a little bit loose so that as the slack in the plastic in the summertime as it warms up it expands and so there's a little bit of flapping in the wind. I like to be able to pull this hip purlin down a little bit with my anchor lines. And so I'll not tighten that up really tight. I use inch and a quarter, anywhere from inch and a quarter, inch and five eighths screws on here. You don't want it to be a screw that's so long that it uh, that it goes all the way through the board. So uh, I've got some scrap plumber strap I was using on another project. Just trim that off. Or if you've got brand new, you want to make sure you tap down these sharp edges. I've cut myself a time or two on those so kind of tap those down out of the way so that you don't get cut on the sharp edges of the plumber strap. So that's how you fasten the hip purlins to the ribs. So to fasten the wiggle wire track in here you have to drill holes or screw some screws through there. They sent me these self-tapping hex head screws. The self-tapping part actually goes through that aluminum quite easily, but the hex head takes up a fair amount of space inside the track. So I like to use the grabber screws just for the space purposes. These uh, self-tapping screws actually do drill a hole quite quickly through the aluminum, and so what I did was I used a device on my, on my uh, drill. Okay, we'll cut that part out. No, don't, don't touch it. So, what I did here then to drill the holes is I just put the self-tapping screw into a nut driver, attached it to my drill, and drove it through, drilled a hole in the wiggle wire track. Doesn't take too long. Take your screw, self -ta or the uh, grabber screws, and just screw them into the wiggle wire track. I've had, if I don't have these spaced close enough, I've actually had the winds bust the heads off these, so you need to have your spacing on these grabber screws uh, 12 to maybe 16 inches or so. You don't want to have, you know, like three or four of them in an eight foot wiggle wire track. You want to have them spaced a lot closer so that you've got a little more strength to them. The uh, self tapping screws are a lot stronger. I've never had any of those break off, but I have had these, these grabber screw heads pop off, so Make sure you get them close enough that you don't have them break off in the wind.
On the outside of the hip purlin, we have wiggle wire track that we use to hold the plastic in place. So from the top on this side over to the top, the hip purlin on the other side, we'll have this wiggle wire track and the plastic will be in place there until we take it off for winter. And then down below it drapes and you can lift it up for ventilation. So we'll show how that happens as we get later in the, in the uh, construction. When I first built this high tunnel, I was kind of in a hurry and I, and I put the, the PVC over there and put the plastic on and then I had to go to the office and the wind kind of blew that day and it almost lifted it off. So I hurried up and came up with another way to keep that from lifting off. So I, I have these uh, stakes, 18 inch rebar, they can be 3 8 inch, half inch rebar, and I welded a washer or a chain link onto them. And then I hurried and drove it down here right next to the post and drove it straight up and down. And that helped, but still with the wind, it lifted that straight back up. So the way I do it now, and it works quite well, is I'll set it off. You want to have a gap here so that your curtain can drop down straight between the stake and the T-post. And then I angle it out at about a 10 degree angle away from the T-post. And then I offset it from the T-post about 6 inches. So it's out here about 6 inches like this, and I drive it all the way down into the ground so I've got a good anchor and then I run a line from an eye screw to the stake that way and that will hold that down and also keep the curtain from billowing. 